All right. Welcome, everybody, to week 14 of our Mario Maker weekly recap. Mario Maker Workshop is the is a school for level design. We learn about level design. We do it as a group. We do it communally. And uh, this is the sort of stream that we use to recap and get everybody caught up to speed. We've been doing some really interesting things. We started a new semester last week. And what that essentially entails is we are making levels together. So up until this point, we have been working independently. We have been focusing on our own skills and our own learning journey for uh, breaking down levels and talking about level design and building better levels. But now the whole point is to take everything that we've learned and and play to all of our strengths and avoid as many of our weaknesses as possible. So that is the entire point of this third semester. And this is the second week of this third semester. So I'm going to recap just about everything that we're doing in the semester. But the first thing I want to do is show off this level. Uh, this is a level that went through the very same process that I was just talking about. Boop. All right, so this is a level that actually started with me. Uh, I can't, there's my brother. Uh, I started with the idea, uh, put down a basic layout, and then as part of this whole sort of semester style curriculum, this whole assignment, uh, I passed the level to my brother and said, you do something with it because I can't do anything. I, like I did as much as I thought I could and I assigned him to some specific tasks. Where am I? I'm Mario, okay. So I originally came up with this Tetris uh, motif, and oh whoa! Is that an echo? Let's try this. So this is the basic level you can see here. Everything's made out of Tetris pieces. That's a motif, and um, <laughs> the level is really short. Um, Oh no, I made a block! Wow, it just frees me there for a long time, jeez. I wonder if there's a way to freeze somebody else in a block. That's a little glance at the level. Uh, we're gonna have Marcus play it again. Uh, after I made the basic layout, my task to my brother was, hey, I want you to tune this for speed running and I want you to make it to where there are multiple viable paths. I want you to make it to where um, different levels of skill allow you to access these different paths, but definitely the hardest one uh, is rewarded with the fastest time. So that's a very specific tuning request, and he took it, ran with it. <laughs> kind of speed running joke there, and we're gonna—he's gonna show off all the different paths. So I'm gonna kill myself and enter spectator mode so he can show. So this kind of introduces uh, our new... Why isn't the camera following him? Uh... What's he doing? And why is the camera not following him? Uh, okay, there it is. Jeez, that was weird. Okay, so he's showing what it looks like to go through a level in one of the speediest paths. As you can see, there's lots of things opening up and closing. Uh, there's three pink coins, and there's lots of different paths. This is a low path, there's a medium path. There's all these things like this you can do. <laughs> and that's one way you can reach the uh, end goal just like that he was showing that it's possible so that's one of the the simplest path you don't have to do any of the fancy things you don't have to go for any like crazy uh whoo he's, he's gonna show it from the beginning so it makes sense as a speed run concept but this is uh introducing an interesting topic that we are just now getting to in the workshop uh we've done all the basics with mario we've done a lot of uh, complex ways of analyzing skill and difficulty and now we're talking about layers now ah that was so close he might need to restart yeah so layers are an interesting concept 
the very the very word layers is a very basic thing that just says like look there are distinct i'm gonna actually look it up because i need to make sure we got a really good definition going here dictionary.com and I, I like it whenever we're using a very general word like in the english language or whatever oh unfort <laughs> To look at the common definition in order to extract the definition, because we never want to make up random video game terms that conflict with the normal way that we use the language and we speak. I'm looking up the definition of layer right now, and one of the uh, definitions says a stratum. Ooh, this is fancy. So this is clearly the high skill path. D doing a series of things that get you to the goal as quickly as possible by understanding the entire level and uh that's very cool uh and then and then putting all the bombs in the right place using all the keys in the right way um and doing it all in one cycle so he tuned the level in terms of these blink blinking block cycles right if you can get to the end and seven total blink blocks if you can get to the end in six total blink blocks you take an easier path and you can get to the end in total of 10 that was a really cool way to segment um or basically to count how multiple paths can get to the end and how fast so that was pretty amazing uh, i'm going to show off that level and kind of show you what we did to work up to that point but let me just click it over to this and we can take a look at what I mean by layers. Here we go. So stratum, a layer of material naturally or artificially formed, often one of a number of parallel layers, one on top of another, one of a number of portions or divisions likened to layers or levels. Uh, then we got geology, biology, ecology, a layer of the ocean. So really, one thing to keep in mind about layers is that um, they have to be distinct, right? Uh, the part about being parallel is not so important. The part about them being stacked on top of each other is pretty good. We can use that for level design, but it's not super important. In general, when we're talking about game design layers, we are talking about very distinct somethings, right? <laughs> uh, when you're talking spatially and you're talking about level layouts, you're talking about um, the arrangement of blocks and things, you can think of it horizontally, like a uh, course maker. Let's just slap in some stuff and show you what I mean. So right here, well, that's the bottom layer. How about a medium layer? Sure. Boop -a -doot 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 -doot. Medium layer, those are two different layers spatially, right? Uh, and here's another layer made out of spikes, right? Boom. Now, So these are three very clear game. Ah! I did not know that was going to happen. I'm going to switch it from this background. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was like, what is happening? Cool. Okay, so there's three distinct layers here. One's low, one's medium, one's high. You touch the high one, you die, right? Uh, Gameplay-wise, there's only really two layers. This one is one layer down here. You go up here. If you jump too high, you die, and you really can't get to the top layer, right? Gameplay-wise, these are all about uh, two layers, two layers of interactivity. So when we're talking about gameplay layers, we always have to specify what category we're specifically talking about. So let's uh, zippity-zip back to here. And we look at level design. Now you can have a layer in terms of uh, multiple paths that you go through a level, right? Uh, you can have a layer in terms of if you have a power up versus you don't have a power up, you have two very distinct experiences. We did an entire uh, assignment on power up laps uh, for, let me, let me see if I can find that. Uh, designoriented.com. Lesson hub, it was lesson number five, nine, power up right here. 
So we did an entire lesson where you go through a level and you have one kind of challenge, but when you grab the power up and you go through it a second time, you get all these different considerations, these new abilities, these new paths. Uh, the power up path is green, the normal path is white. You can check out all these level maps and play all these levels by going to our website, uh, designoriented.net, and you can play and see for yourself. But essentially, this is a way of stacking two very distinct gameplay experiences in one single space. And that's why we can easily think of this as being a layer. Um, the fact that they're separated by having a power-up or not having a power-up is not so important for understanding that the layer is ve two very distinct things uh, presented in one sort of package, so to speak, right? So if you think about a traditional, very linear game, and you think about a very linear level, they give you the challenge, you hit the jump at the right time, that's it. So it's just like blah, 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 and you hit it. But then Mario came along and it introduced this concept of pipes and subworlds. And in Mario 1 1, you can go into a pipe, enter a subworld, and come out of another place. And that alternate path itself is a layer, right? It's an alternate way to experience the same level. In that case, it kind of takes you to a separate room and kind of spits you back out. But the basic concept of, oh, there's two very distinct ways of experiencing this level straight up, and then one using a shortcut. Uh, likewise, we can do something here where <laughs> No! So now I can experience the final layer because I have a star, right? That's a power-up layer. Something very simple, but it's illustrated by this concept that there are very distinct gameplay experiences. This one up here is a limited one because I can't stay up there forever. This one down here is very safe and I can jump however I want. This one's kind of dangerous, so on and so forth, right? Uh, so if this were just a section in the entire level and you're kind of running along and doing your thing, when you get to this section, you're like, oh, this section has layers. There's multiple things going on here. And depending on whether or not I have the right stuff or I do the right thing, I can experience very different kinds of gameplay challenges, right? But you could have layered lots of stuff, right? When we're talking about a level overall, we're really talking about the experience of the challenges that the level presents. So in the, in the broadest sense, when I say layers, I'm talking about what are the different challenges that are capable here? What are the different ways that the enemies create distinct timing challenges? What are the ways that the level creates distinct jumping and platforming challenges? And it's got to be distinct. It's th like the difference between, you know, what we have right here and maybe something like this not very distinct like well, except for the star reversed <laughs> don't ignore that but like this versus the original this is about the same right what's different about this Ooh, i can jump up through a hole there's no enemies there's no threats there's no secrets there's no coins so it's practically the same so really uh in a very similar way when we talked about gameplay ideas we're really looking for distinct standout and highly identifiable uh, experiences or ideas that are conveyed through the gameplay challenges. So that's basically what I mean by, uh, let's go to Course World, layers. So when you're playing a level, let's go back to the, the Mario Maker worksheet and let's take a look at the boop, courses tab that has all of our courses. So this is the 21 point criteria that we use to evaluate levels. Ever since we started the workshop, there's 21 different things to consider here. Um, theme, gameplay idea, layout, enemies, coins, power-ups. These mostly are just talking about how these elements are arranged in the level and what they might do on first uh, when you first encounter them or in a very simple way. This whole section talks about challenge, difficulty, skill, fairness. That's its own second semester stuff. And now that we're in this golden area, we're talking about layers and secrets and pacing and speed running, development, counterpoint, and principles, right? Now... Layers is a broad term. It's a big category. It can include things like doing cool stuff with power-ups, doing cool stuff with coins or secrets, maybe something where it's different for multiplayer than it is for single player. And let me blow this up so you guys can see it a little better. I always forget to do that. But yeah, single versus multiplayer. Maybe there's some suspended elements or folded level design. All that goes in this very broad category. But just for clarity, I broke out a few of those into their own like secrets. We talk about secrets. Maybe the secrets are question blocks they clue you in on it maybe they're uh, hidden blocks maybe they're dev doors maybe you have to have a power-up who knows how you do your secrets pacing is more about uh, difficulty and how challenges occur back to back 
or how you experience a level as a straight shot. So that's a, a different thing to consider. Speed run, right? We just talked about a speed run. Can you go fast all the time through the level? Are there multiple viable paths? Are there timing gates? Is the speed run less interesting than the normal run through the level, right? Uh, normal play, does it ignore significant parts of the course, right? That's all things to consider when you're like, is this level, does this level function as a basic level, but is there also something distinct or interesting, well-tuned or well-made about when you speed run this level? And that's what we talk about there development counterpoints so on and so forth all different types of layers all different ways to analyze uh increasingly complex gameplay scenarios especially the kind that mario games uh do especially well so let's jump into course world and take a look what are we gonna do let's look take a look at that level uh that marcus just showed us and he showed us like the super skill based run he showed us a normal run i'm gonna show you what an even more normal run and this is what i was talking about this is a collaboration for the mario maker workshop uh i worked on it i started it marcus worked on it and bleach got his hands on it too uh bleach is probably here in the chat if he has any questions i'll i'll pipe him in but just let me know bleach if you want to say something cool so let me show what this level looks like it's actually a really cool level too do 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 that was close tetris blocks so this whole area completely optional right obviously you saw marcus skip it in speed run and you can ah! oh it's going sideways What's happening? I thought those things went down. Bleach, who put those sideways? Those are supposed to be parachutes. What happened? What happened? Is, is one a parachute and one's a sideways? I think that was us. Anyway, uh, a pipe bleach in. I had no idea what was happening right there, bleach. <laughs> but anyway, I got, so then when you get to this area, it's really cool. You can, ah! You don't want to fall in the pit. Maybe we should have made that a little bit more obvious, but you know, you're, you're gonna fall in the pit over here. You're gonna fall in the pit over here. You just gotta be careful, right? So, yeah, the, the, the blue, the red, they all make Tetris formations and they kind of fade into each other, right? Only when this one's open do enemy bombs come out. I mean, no, that was close. I barely had enough time to pay attention to what was going on there. Um, yeah, there's there's multiple different paths you can take. There's a, obviously a low path, a medium path, a high path. That's just kind of the, the basic stuff we were talking about before. These coins make it even more interesting, right? Uh, now, and these enemies add this extra layer, like look what happens when they fall and they're like bouncing off of each other and exploding, but the threat's only temporary, so. Depending on how close you are up here and what you do down here, you get all these different kind of challenges. Ah! No! I was looking at the bombs. But yeah. This level's not hard to get through. Ah! Did somebody move that one? I thought that was one lower before. I'm just dying. Ah. Still challenging. Yep. So when Bleach came along, oh, I'll show you guys in a second. That's so cool. You make your own Tetris world and you do this. This is how I do this challenge, by the way. Instead of hitting it from low, I just do a double bump right here. <coughs> um, I don't recall altering those question blocks with question for it, but it kind of makes it kind of interesting that one now drops one goes to the right where you can kind of catch it if you catch up to it. Oh, I messed that one up. Ah, why'd you make that brick just like that? That probably should have been one lower. How dare you? 
Wow, you have to get into that cage to hit that. You guys are... Man, you guys really wanted the uh, the slow low path to be hampered. This is interesting. I had a, a theory of how it could potentially be done faster, but I don't know if it's actually faster. Ah! Ah! No! Probably should have been a run jumpable to get to the top. Or you can just, you know, do that. Um, so, like, yeah, interesting level. There's a couple of principles we didn't uphold, like being able to get to the top of the flagpole. Maybe you can do it if you're really fancy. Um, maybe that door should have spit you out at the top of the flagpole. That would have been perfectly acceptable. Lots of little things, but uh, as far as testing out this whole collaboration system, that was a lot of fun. So let me show you guys exactly what that looked like. Boom. This is the workbench. This is where we do all of our coordination and collaboration and where Bleach leaves his cursor right here uh, so everybody can see it. Uh, this is the first project we d decided to run through the system. So let me just do uh, 150. All right, here, uh, intermittent floor. I, I picked this um, gameplay idea because we all took a questionnaire. And one of the final questions was, if you had to work on a gameplay idea from the sheet, which is here's a sheet, we have over 200. We have over 327 different ideas that we all have collectively put together. Um, and this is the latest one, make blocks that form tetra shapes. Um, the questionnaire said, if you could pick just three ideas, which ones would you pick? My number one is power switch, uh, for whatever reason. Uh, number two is circuit breaker or aeroporter. And number three is intermittent floor. I just picked it, went to the workbench, plopped it in here, it titled it for me and I said, okay, I got a scope plan of 15 points and I started the project. I started it earlier last week. I described the project here so that everyone could kind of be on the same page. And then I set the basic layout in a Tetris style fashion. Uh, I also set up like a few things just to get the level moving, I think. I think I put some pink coins in there, threw some power ups in there or whatever, just to get the stuff started. And then like I see some see here, a unique way of obtaining the super shroom was definitely the parachute and the flying, uh, especially jumping across the gaps. So I completed it, completed it. Um, I added the bomb bomb and the pipe, completed it, and I did the basic layout. I was like, I'm done. I have no idea what this level's doing. And I said, Marcus, you add coins. Or I said, yeah, you add the pink coins. So we added the pink coins based on tuning it around speed run. Multiple paths are viable with different skills. This was the, the task that I charged him with. I was like, make it possible. I have no idea. And he went in, and let me show you what's really cool about this. Boom, and let me just uh, show history. Boom, 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 boom. Why did it just do that? Okay. There we go. Come on. Go to Kirby Kid. Quit wasting my time. Alright, so you can see here that this was the original thing that I passed. Uh, I took four screenshots and I was like, alright. You can see all the layouts here. You can see how the, the question blocks on the left were different. The Tetris pieces were in different places. I outlined some stuff. I made this brick formation. Uh, I zoomed in. I'm like, you take it over, Marcus. And then Marcus was like, okay. He went in, did his thing, did a whole speed running pass, changed the blocks in the beginning, changed the question blocks, changed a few of the formations here, and, and made the ending really hard and crazy, right? Um, but then he tuned it all to where the fastest path possible took advantage of all the 
nuances, all the timing, all the enemies, all the coins, and that's why this level, he did a speedrun tuning pass, right? He's not trying to fix the level in terms of principles. He's not trying to fix the level in terms of uh, all these other kinds of things he could have changed. He just did what exactly what he was told and then passed it along to Bleach. And did you ever take screenshots, Bleach? And post it to Twitter? Oh, yeah, you said, but I couldn't see it, right? Yeah, I did. Are you following me? I mean, if you're I, following I, me, I, I, always, see my tweet. I always follow you, man. <clears throat> what is your name? The real Bleach X. Bleach X? Ah, right, there we go. The real Bleach X. EX, okay. Okay, so this is what Bleach did, right? So he went in, moved around a few things because he thought a few things were hard, changed around the, the ending a little bit, uh, so on and so forth, and just did tiny little adjustments in order to, as you can see here, uh, make sure that the pacing is even, that the first section is about as hard as the second section, basically for uh, first-time players, not for like the high-level speedrunning stuff, but just whatever. And for the most part, he changed the ending so that m more normies, more normie people can just have a smoother time beating the level and getting done with it. Exactly what this whole setup is for. All of us using our particular uh, areas of design that we're better at and then doing exactly what we need to do in getting out. This level could use some more tuning. Uh, there's obviously a lot of areas we didn't touch, but that's fine. Like, we did it, and the, the level's actually a lot of fun to play. So... Let me just take this real bleach EX right here. And pop that in there. And what I love about this system is all the history of all those stages and the level are, are captured within this uh, spreadsheet. So that is essentially what we're going to be doing for the next few weeks. We're going to be increasing... Uh, I guess I didn't tell you about the scope plan. You have 15 points and you have to select things over here in order to make your level how you want to. And then when you do select something, you know, if that's not working right now. When you select something, the points pop up and then it adds up to your total and you're not supposed to exceed your plan scope. So it's about understanding your skill set, looking ahead of, the, ahead of time, understanding who you can work with, making the level and planning it out to where you can hit very specific aspects of design like I know this is too hard so I'm not going to go for it I know this would take too much time so I'm not going to do it so on and so forth and we did that with two levels so far uh, we got a couple of more in the works so I'll show you that in a second but let me go ahead and show you the second one that we worked on it passed from Dr. Haji to me and then I just published it because this level is giving me a headache Oop, have you seen it Bleach? have you seen the level? which level? Uh, Run Busters. I have not. This is going to be some major spoilers. Um, and I kind of just want to put it in the video, but man. Uh, uh, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it in the uh, editor. So this is an example of a stage... Okay, so this is an example of a stage where if you look at the, the setup, Mark has started the basic layout in Bros 3 style. He did the uh, enemies, he did the power up, right? Which is the Starman. The, the original idea for Run Busters, as you can see here, which check out this really cool workshop search, Run Bust. Gameplay ideas, Run Buster, use the increased speed of the star to get to previously unreachable areas. That is the general gameplay idea. It's the one that Mark has picked in his, uh, he didn't even put it here. What a liar. And it's the one that he picked for the level. And the description says, you know, the level telescopes in the smaller sections try to make something interesting in each unique section. After the player goes deep enough, a star and a door to the beginning transforms the level into a speed run. That's the basic idea of the course. Uh, and then he assigned me two very specific things that cost eight points total, right? So this is kind of a big deal. If you're going to spend half of your, more than half of your points, this is what you got to make sure that it's worth it, right? So he's like, Richard, me, I want you to make this multi-layered, 
layered level design and I want you to make it have internal timing skills. So these are the D card skills, timing, knowledge, re uh, reflex, adaptation, and dexterity. And he's like, I want internal timing. Internal timing was one of the hardest ones to get examples of when we did our entire D card bingo, which you can see here. So yeah, we did purple for knowledge, red for dexterity, yellow for reflex, and timing. Look at internal. Like, look at this huge gap. We did not do because it's hard to find examples of things with internal timing. Uh, so yeah, uh, pretty much a big challenge here. And Marcus gave me two of the things that I almost I love to do most because as you can see in my questionnaire, what aspect of course creation can you complete quickly without trouble? And I was like, layers. I love layers. I think in layers. I think non-linearly. So this comes naturally to me and I'm going to apply my skills for this project. This is what the project looked like. Uh, show edit history. This is what the project looked like uh, when Marcus passed it to me. So like, okay, level, got some jumps, got some question blocks here. You know, you get a star, you jump on the top, you jump all the way over the pipe, you get to the end, and you win. Um, this is very similar to a level that he created here, which I already have up on the screen of one where you go down to a pit. There's some cool slants, uh, some tricky jumps, but once you get the star, you go into a door, and then you run to the end and you jump all the way over a dangerous pit, right? Very similar gameplay concept, but completely in a different direction, which is really cool. So when I took the level, I did this. So Bleach, if you're watching and you have any questions about layers, uh, just let me know. I'm going to try to make sure that the stream doesn't bleed. Oh, wait, I can just do this probably. Uh, say something? So I've always struggled with what layers are. <clears throat> and it sounds like you're saying that it can not only be like several different physical platforms in the level, but it can also be um, different ways to approach the level with different items or rules. Yeah, so a, a level, for as far as basic layout goes, which is the arrangement of the platforms and the objects and things, a way to make it layered is to add more stuff on top, like a cake. You're like, oh, physically creating spaces where you can jump around. That's a layer. Um, another way to do it is, okay, what about enemies? What makes enemies uh, have distinct uh, ways of engaging with them? Well, what if you could kill the enemies one way, or you could kill the enemies another way, right? Like, hitting... Hammer Brothers from beneath or jumping on them from the top, right? You got two plans of attacks, right? So that enemy's got multiple approaches, uh, but if you don't put them on bricks that you can punch from the bottom, that whole combat possibility is not possible, right? So there's ways to use a Hammer Brother to where they have multiple approaches to taking them out, and there's ways to arrange them where they don't. You take a coin, right? You can have a coin to where you can jump for it, or you can have a coin to where you can get Koopa shells and kick at it, right, and, and collect it, or use a POW block and knock it down, right? Those are distinct ways of gathering the coin, the goal being gathering the coin in this case, but you put multiple ways to do it, you've got layers, right? There's multiple ways to experience the act of getting that coin. But when it comes to level design, we're, th we're talking about multiple ways of conquering the level for the most part. Uh, for the other elements, it's things are simpler because those elements are relatively simple. But a level design is a combination of all those elements. So we're looking for ways to where to get the whole job done, which is the whole reason I'm in this level, is to win. What different ways can I do it and are they distinct from each other, right? Because you could have a lot of the similar ways or you can have very, very, very different ways that stress different skills and different play styles and everything. So, you, do you want to play this Bleach online and uh, I can see you play it for the first time? You want me to get in a co-op match with you? Yeah, set up a room. Alright. And I'll explain a little bit more about layers, uh, and I won't show you the stuff so you can get spoiled. So let's jump back to the sheet here. 
this level is published, right? Yeah, it's under my name. Okay, so now that you guys... So this will be a really good example of some of the most complex layering that I think I've ever seen in a Mario 2D platformer. Uh, and we can take a look at some other examples of secrets and speed run examples um, for layer layers. Uh, we can take a look at that after this. Oops, so I need to go to Course World. I need to back out. I need to go to Network Play. I need to play with friends. I need to go to Courses. Yeah, so the, do the power-ups have a distinct gameplay if you have it or not? Because getting the coins have multiple ways to get them. Does uh, accessing secrets, is there multiple ways to do it, right? Um, there's some classic Super Mario Brothers bonus rooms in which there are multiple ways to get, the, get all the coins out of the room. Some you can break bricks or some you can punch things from below or jump into the holes and all these different kind of little ways of doing things. How do I open the room? You do I have to go down to the yellow network play? The bottom left button in the network play orange screen, play with friends. And then you, hey, you did it. And then you hit the Y button, I think, and, and s wait, wait, wait. You have to download my level first. Oh, no, wait, I should have hosted. I'm going to back out. You can host. Can you buy me like a minute of time? I'd use the restroom real quick. Yeah, I'm gonna keep explaining this. Play with friends. Create room. Normal. My courses. This one. Okay. So let's take a look back here. Uh, boop. Yep. So you can see a lot of these levels have multiple ways of doing things. Uh, some some have completely new areas that you can only access if you have the power up. Uh, some give you new ways to tell, deal with enemies if you have the power up. Some give you, you know, there's multiple ways to do a lot of these things, and I tried to um, explain those different possibilities and when you have a, a possibility that's like a whole different kind of strategy uh, that's really when we're starting to talk about layers right it's not just about changing your timing it's not just about like oh I'm gonna avoid the enemies instead of killing them you're like well it's, you're still jumping over them it's about the same we're really talking about completely different paths completely different strategies that require this that not just require a different set of skills or harder skills or whatever but that the gameplay experience or the gameplay ideas that are uh, communicated through that interactive experience are distinct and different like um yeah <laughs> this is another example of a super layered uh level that i'll show you in a bit Yeah, all my levels tend to be non non-linearly layered. Uh, it's about going forward and backwards, and it's about doing clever things with uh, items and all these other kinds of fun things. All right, we got bleach. I'm back. All right, let's play a co-op. Now, you, you're, I'll tell you when you need to reset the uh, uh, restart the stage because you're gonna need to reset a few things. Uh, if you if you mess it up, and you're also a robot, you, so you can mean you can soft block this level. Kind of. You you only get one one uh, star. So if you grab it, see the star below there. If you grab it, then you won't get it back. So even if you die and respawn, it won't come back. Um, yeah. So wait, 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 wait. Should I kill myself first? Yeah. If you'd like to spectate. Do 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 okay. do do. Okay. This is 
Let's do it. Why is my capture card freaking out? So you'd be hearing the star theme. I can't hear it. Straight to the uh, the end. Yep. I I didn't feel comfortable digging into the secrets because I don't know the level. Yeah, try it again. Go ahead. Let her rip. It's kind of the uh, the lessons the 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 style that I ch tend to do with all my levels. I make them incredibly dense, complex, non-linear, layered, deep, but then I also make it super easy to beat. So like, everyone just beats it and moves on. Like, well, if you're that kind of person, you're that kind of person. Teamwork. I'm still scratching my head over the question block down there. If I hit it, whatever's in there would just be destroyed. So it's like, I can't shoot the shell upward. Three hundred minutes to decide. Let's go back and see what this is all about. Ooh, it's oh, now I screwed up. <laughs> Maybe. Yes. <laughs> How do, how do I reset? Uh, you hit start, uh, and there should be an option there for you. Oh, probably not give up. Probably restart is the option. Oh, there was an option to do that? I've, I've not done it, or I don't remember, but we'll jump back in. Yeah, keep talking it through, that's good. Um... My hey, brain is Luigi. churning now. <laughs> this love gave me such a headache, but I know why now, and I'm gonna try to c prevent those things in the future. I have a headache. <laughs> you cough and quits. Last that long. <laughs> Go ahead and find the right option to restart it once you spawn your character back. You have to spawn your character back first. Now start. Hmm. Start over. Oh! The star was what? respawning! Oh. Interesting. Well, you should restart it anyway so we can simulate more or less what the normal gameplay would look like. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. The star didn't. wasn't there long enough. Let's try this. Let's see if. Uh... Oh, shoot! <laughs> I was, gonna could, work on this one. <laughs> I was hoping I could get this shell to fall off the cliff that the pipe is on and get to the other switch so that it would holy lag spikes. Hello. Oh. You can restart. You don't have to finish the level. 
I think the stars are spawning maybe because there's two players. Uh, I think if you just wait long enough and you have a naked power up, it just respawns in co-op. Yep. You don't have to like grab the Why do I have to, why do I keep doing that? Yeah, I don't know, you're wasting time. <laughs> nice. Oh, 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 oh! Come back here! If only I could have seen further down. <laughs> <laughs> Re uh, restart, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. <laughs> so I, I use a lot of counterpoint in order to guide people on this level. Which is why you're getting all these really interesting ideas and they're the right ideas instead of the wrong ideas. You're the only one who's done this strategy, by the way. I've never seen this before. Immediately going back to the door like that. I was like, hmm. the camera would cooperate better. I can't get there. I don't know how to flip the switch. I guess I could have gone for the uh, the bonus coins in the very end, but I'm more interested in what's in the, in the middle of the level. Keep thinking explore all these nooks and crannies. Keep going. We'll jump back in. Man! Thinking about making this co-op, this very basic concept to where people might want to divvy up tasks, share power-ups, limited power-ups. Man, this is, level design has no limit. This stuff is crazy. It makes me uh, smile like an you idiot. Have, you have somebody in your chat room. Oh, cool. Thanks for letting me know. Get out. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, what you up to? Layers can be complicated for the player. Yes, they can. Uh, layers by nature are more stuff. And more stuff is more things to think about, more things to potentially do, more things to consider and then, you know, ignore. That's already just adding more stuff for the player to worry about or whatever. So yeah, you're, per you're exactly right on that. But if you make them subtle enough, then they actually won't notice them. There's, there's more finesse to it. Interesting. Go See if it'll respond or not. <laughs> you better not grab it if it responds. Get out of there. <laughs> Think of some other options. I guess that gives credence to my theory or, that it I was, mean, it might respond. Both. It might respond because you died and you respawned, and since they realized no players were active, it tried to reset as much of the conditions as possible. That's also a possibility. Man, I'm so dehydrated. What is up, Loop and Snoop? Yo yo, where do you come from? Alright, so now what are you thinking? I'm thinking... I don't know what to do. Well, you did a lot that uh, other time that you got to the end, but the switch was not flipped the way you wanted to. Now, uh, how many switches do you see? Uh, two. Alright, there's one that's up there and there's one that's down here. If you get the one that's down there, you'll probably be stuck, but if you get the one up there, you can always 
jump back out. So try to do your same strategy, but then add that piece. This is surprisingly a lot. Yeah, as soon as you make something non-linear, it just makes my head hurt. <laughs> but you're doing a really good job. Now you got That's... over here with the right polarity, two keys, and not no star power, right? Yeah, the thing is, I don't know where another star is, though. Are you sure? Well, there's one directly above me. Yeah. I don't know if I can get down to hit the switch, though. Guess I can. <laughs> it's really tight, though. Let's try it again. Let's do it. One of the things I love about this level is it's really complex, but there's only two sections, right? So you're never <laughs> like, oh, where do I go again? Like, it's either right there on the screen or it's on the right there on the left. And since you fall down pits, you really don't have to worry about climbing back out unless you do a very specific sequence. Are you attempting to play with me, or are you just following me? I'm just watching, because I'm bored. <laughs> I'm not bored. I just, like, jump. I think I screwed up already. Uh, spawn in and then restart. That? You should, oh, wait. Hey. You should restart. Quit cheating. I did. <laughs> <laughs> so now you gotta think, well, if I run out of star power, then how do I keep my star power as long as possible? As long as possible. I don't know. Well, one thing you do is not grab it earlier than you need to, right? <laughs> that's that's how you extend it. You don't need to grab it. Why do I keep doing that? <laughs> I guess no other Mario game except this one does that. My brain's sloshing around. Yeah. After this one, I'll, I'll show you some stuff. I hit the switch. Get the star, go, go back to the it. door. Get the star, go to the key. Don't grab the key. Or it's it. Get up on top, get the star. Oh, the star. What? The star. The, star. the one right there in that little, on top of the munchers. I was... I was about to, but you said that too late or too early. Yeah. Well, now you gotta figure out. Okay. back over and look. It's there waiting for you. Now all you have to do is figure out a way to get back up uh, and it'll be there for I, you. I don't think you can. I, you can. The blue, the blue uh, blocks are too high and I don't have another star going through the door. What I had to do after getting the star on top of the pipe was drop 
down immediately so I could get the uh, the, uh, the blue box. I feel it, Richard. I feel the pain in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Sequencing is difficult <laughs> when when timing's involved and choices have to be made. You're like, oh no, my head. Oh no! Keep moving. Keep moving. But I screwed up. My jump didn't go off at the last second. It's true. But you can always explore what happens before you reset. There's nothing left for me to do except to hit the goalpost. Alright, reset. I still don't have that second key on my in my route. Go down. Hit that switch. Hit the switch. Okay, now now you got in the right polarity. No! I'm not on that pixel! The shadow killed me! <laughs> I... I don't know how to get the, uh... The other key down here. Oh, you did it! You actually did it, that's crazy. Well, you, you figured out that it's possible to pick a shell on top and have it automatically hit the switch for you. That is crazy. Mm -mm. This is so much. <laughs> you don't even know. I cannot exaggerate uh, how much, I can, how many layers there are here. Yeah, now I understand why you were saying Layers upon layers upon layers. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna need a break in a moment. Yeah, yeah, I need I'll take over as soon as you're ready. Uh, doing everything in this level seems kinda like a puzzle type level in that it's figuring out everything that's possible and then figuring out the proper order to do them and the proper solution. Yeah, I flagged it as a puzzle solving and short and sweet. The basic level is a platformer. You just get the star and you run and you jump and it's over. Um, getting everything. Oh no! <laughs> Alright, you, sh you should give up so I can show you some stuff. Well, sure. Yeah, I'll just show the stream from my end so I can do, have editor powers. But yeah, good, good stuff, Bleach. Any questions, Spock? Because I'm about to show you some spoilers for this level. And if you really want to give it a shot on your own. You want to do this solo, okay. Yeah, yeah, I'm going back into editor. Your call, Spock. Should I show you stuff? Or should I, should I show other kinds of layers and other levels? Because once I show you, okay, it says go ahead, your mind's going to be blown. There's only so many opportunities I can give, but this, here we go. The level that I made for Mario Maker 1 also has a ton of layers like this too, you remember. So let me show you the basics. Oh no, I don't have a star, but there's coins there. I think I'll follow the arrow. Ah, Koop, Koopa, ah. I can't get this, just like Bleach said. I go over here. No danger because the pipe. I can see coins that tell me I can somewhat do this, but I can't reach it, and I need to be invincible to get it. Hmm. You could probably jump off that Koopa to get that one key, can't you? Which one? 
those two on top right there. If you go, if one goes left enough, you might be able to potentially reach the uh, the key. If, if you jump on it right, just wait for it to go underneath. And I don't know if you have the height, but maybe you could hit the key. That's actually an that interesting idea. Let's see. Uh, interesting, I didn't jump off the Koopa to get the first key, but it's an interesting strategy, says Spock. I found the way to get the first key. How'd you get the first key? Oh, he might be playing it as we go. No! That's so pixel perfect, I do not recommend doing that. But nice idea, Bleach. <laughs> so it's possible, it's just hard. Yeah, that one is not recommended. I'm so okay. We go over here. Bam. I toss a shell in with a running jump. That, you can do that. I'll show you that in a second. Go over here. Uh, my jump and I have two keys and there's not much I can do unless I shouldn't have hit that button So there's an entire Koopa layer. You can get everything in this game almost without getting any stars. And um, just by using Koopa shells. And this is one of the really, really uh, nuanced techniques where you can get up without... No! Why was that Koopa there perfectly? Get out of here. One thing about Koopas is they'll despawn if they're off screen, but if you kick them, they don't despawn. You can't throw them up in three, Why right? It? Why does it feel laggy? What? No, you cannot. See how that one's still bouncing? Ah, it's so hard. <laughs> Have you done this before? I'm jumping yeah. off this Koopa? Yeah. Dang. You just have to be like moving maximum forward to get it. It's it's pretty tight. This one is just for fun. I thought I made it possible because I thought it was funny, not that I expect people to do this one. I need to get a running jump, right? And then press to the very front end of the Koopa. And then make sure he doesn't bite me. Okay, let's try it again. Down the hole. Oh, the sound's off. Okay. I forget when I'm on the stream, the sound is off. As in, d delayed. Here, bam. Bam. Almost got that. Why did I get this idea in my head that the star eventually vanished? It doesn't okay. vanish. No! Oh, the music in my headset's delayed. I had time. No! Annoying. I'll try it again. Almost. So, there's that route where you hit the star. Okay, I'll just show you from up here. When, when the blues are up, which I will 
cheat real quick. When the blues are up, they make this little staircase. And this, the star just waits there for you. It'll be there forever unless you go through a um, door, right? So you can actually leave that there and do this. And like, start doing some stuff over here. Uh, you can even, you know, take something like this. Do that. Oh, it hit the switch! No! No! I did not want it to do that. But that's all right. We'll Maybe if you jump when you held it while well, it was aimed at the arm, you could hit it and jump through the blue one. Oh, so check this out, check this out. This is a really cool one. Uh... Okay. <coughs> okay, look. Koopa down there, bouncing, right? The only way you can get that... Oh, there's two ways to get that blue shell like this. One is this, um, what, what am I supposed to do? Okay, okay, okay. Drop this one. That one still bounces, and I do that technique you showed earlier where you kick it over there, wait for it to bounce, run for it, slide, hit it, <coughs> and then as it comes back, freaking get in the room! Yes! Freaking did it! Uh. Freaking key, baby. Freaking key. Two shells, baby. And check this out. You were like, oh no, I'm dead. Oh, shoot, I forgot the star set. Let's pretend like the star's not here. Well, this is a technique here where you can just run with a Koopa shell. So like, this one will bounce. Uh, what do you do with this one? Okay, so check this out. Let's say you have a star. Stop moving! And you're like, well, I don't want to go through the whole routine again. There's two things you can do. One is this. And get up here. Or the other is this. And get up here, right? As long as you have a star, you've got all the power. And you can get up. <laughs> in both those different directions, right? Uh, let me see another thing. So I showed you how to get... I showed you how to get this coin with a Koopa and this coin with an elaborate Koopa setup. Let me show you another Koopa setup. This is one that Marcus uh, pretty much perfected. Where you do this, get yourself a friend hanging with Mr. Koopa. You do this, you do the, uh... Oh. So look, did you notice there was a fast and a slow uh, Koopa kick, right? No. So like, if I do this, you can see how slow it is. Boom, boom, back. But if I run and do that, like this, boom, boom, back. It's faster. So basically, if I do this, run and kick, it's at a fast speed, and now I can do this. Watch, watch, watch. Ah, I almost had it. Those coins there must symbolize you jumping up in the area somehow. Well, I did the sliding jump with the star to get to the uh, spike part. Mmm. So this, you can actually time it off screen. This is the internal timing, both kicking it this way and waiting for it, and running at the right time, or this one I'm about to show you. Oh, shoot. This is internal timing as well. You, you get your running kick and then you and you have to time it to where the shell falls and then you re-hit it before it hits the thingy uh, Marcus was really good at that I'm not sure how to do it <laughs> I guess he started with it open I had to either start with the close someone in your chat is either a bot or wants you to play their maker level I don't know how he did that, but you, you can do it to where he flies over and gets that. Ah, what, what is the secret? This is an educational course, not a place to play the other people's level. Yeah, yeah. Or is yeah we're just going over uh, levels that 
were made for our Mario Maker level design school called the Mario Maker Workshop. Uh, not playing user levels at this time. Let me get rid of this. So, okay, so you saw that. You can get this key with the shell in multiple ways. You can get this one with the shell or with the star power. You can get this one with star power. You can come around the top to get this one with star power. You can leap out this hole with star power. Um, here's another cool thing you can do. Let's say you're here. Let me hit the switch. Grab it. Oh, I missed that jump. Well, ah, no! Okay, I didn't mean to land on that spike, but you can see how this jump is really tight. I'll show you here. Uh, you can actually hit this star out without stopping and get this jump. See how tight that is? So now I have two stars. Star sandwich. Oh, I didn't mean to grab that. Shoot. Ah, I freaking did it. Shoot, 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 shoot. Here's the secret. Couldn't get it. <laughs> okay, so you can see how. You have the option to hit the star in multiple places, forward or moving backwards, have them drop down or get them early, and this star you can have drop to this pit or go into this cubby. Those are some options there, but there's an even there's another one which I'll show you here. I have uh, a question. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Why is there a hidden star block in that last nook and cranny where the third key is? Let me show you. And what's under that the, the really the, the blue stairs in the top of the sky has an invisible yeah, yeah, let me show you question me show block you. there, which doesn't seem like you could hit it. Ah! Okay, hold on. So, one of the original ideas for this is doing stuff once you get your star power. Ah, oh, come on. Oh, okay. Once you get your star power, and the thing you get, you gain with star power is height and distance. So I wanted to make something that rewarded people for. Yes, 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 yes. So check this out. Let's say you did that or something like this. It's not unreasonable to get to this point of stage like this. Uh, shoot, how do I do this? Check this out, check this out, check this out, check this out. Please don't kill me, okay. I need to hit this guy. No, 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 no. I messed it up. It's so confusing. <laughs> I should have kicked it backwards. Grab this one. Uh, whatever. So you can be up here <laughs> with a Koopa shell, which is what I tried to do. Um, you can do something fancy to have the Koopa shell run backwards like this, run off, hit the switch, and right when it hits the switch, you take the other Koopa shell and you jump up here with it. So let's say I have a Koop. And because you can do so much in this game with just a shell, you come down here and you're like, I'll just pause it. Thank you. And you're supposed to use all three of your keys to climb this spiky mountain and then beat the level, right? But let's say you're this you're the speedrunning type, so you like grab this, grab that, you just wanna run. Okay, it didn't work. You wanna run. It didn't work. I need to pay attention. I like how there's Run, run, ah. and you get that up there. So, 
you can run like as you can see here with star power and this is the only way you can hit this one you have to be invincible to run off this anyway but there's no other way to not be invincible and um whack that unfortunately um you know the star will get destroyed if blues are flipped up so like whatever but otherwise you can gain you can gain one more star that actually falls into this cubby uh, if you super run and don't even slow down for this right you don't even slow down and then you can even come back down here do some stuff and then right when you're ready for it you're like uh yeah blues down I don't have a I don't have a shell. The only way I can get a shell. Okay, so check this out. Then you can do that, right? And get to the end. Uh, this would be a soft lock or a terrible trap uh, if you got stuck in here. So I, I put these spikes here so that the only way you should be in this area is if you were invincible or kicked a shell. So you should be relatively safe from being trapped in there because you didn't know that hidden block existed. Um, here's the final cool thing you can do. The star would go right though, right? If yeah, it would, it, would, it would exit platform. the pit. Yeah, it exits the pit. So you have to get out of there. <laughs> so let's say you're like this. Like, grab, grab. Grab. Ah, missed it. That's fine. No, no! Okay, what was I doing with that? <laughs> oh, so here's, here's a cool thing, right? Um, what was it? The only, there's a nuanced thing where you can hold the shell as Star Mario if you were holding it ahead of time. That gives you a very set amount of time to do something cool with it. You can obviously make it to the end of the level and kick the shell in there. That's a thing that's possible. Uh, if you want to reverse the polarity on this blue thing with that technique, you have to do this, 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 that, grab it, run, and then as you run, kick it, right? Shoot, missed. Oh wait, it worked! Why not even did that part? Whoa, counterpoint. <laughs> so that's one of the cool parts about this, right? It's it's very dense, it's very complex, but it's just running and jumping. <laughs> There's not anything too crazy you have to do, and because uh, you have so many possibilities when you have the star, you just keep going for it, right? Nothing can kill you when you have the star. There's no pits. So right there, I kicked the shell and I missed it, but it had bounced down, hit the on-off switch anyway, which is what I wanted. And I could have kept going, or I could have kicked it as I flew. Let me, let me test that. Let me test that. No, green! Red, baby. So let's say you got up here, and the blue is switched on. Why is it off? So you wanted that to be off. I think there's just a simple thing you can... No, nope, that didn't work. I think I can just stand here. Same angle? Okay. Light. Uh, I'm not good at that. <sighs> really? Oh, that didn't hit? Well, there's something I did where I was running with a shell. With star power, 
Oh, three of them. Okay. Kill this one. Kill this one. Sounds running. I guess I guess when I'm running with a shell, I can just kick it and then jump. I don't need anything fancy, right? So this this is what I can do. Shoot. So if I had the star power and I was running here, and I was running, I could just do that, right? And then jump up here, and then it would be reverse polarity. Nothing fancy. <coughs> Or I could do something fancy like this. And like as I was running, jump and hit it like that. Wow. Well. So there are five stars and three keys and a bunch of possibilities, but that's essentially what the level is. Oh man. It didn't even register me a uh, register with me. How simple that solution was. Just throw a Koopa shell on there and you get the key and <laughs> the star. Yeah, there's there's a lot of things where like, oh, you can kick a Koopa in here. You can jump over here with invincibility. You can uh, time things out and get a Koopa here. Like, since everything is so dense and layered, usually the first one you think of is usually what you think is the only answer because usually there's only one way to do things and that's what's really cool about some density like this but yeah that's the level uh wrapping up the stream because i was streaming for a while uh yeah those are the two levels that we put through the uh the workbench so far what's up uh, I don't know, I already forgot. No. I, I was going to ask you if there was anything else for tonight besides the level. Yeah, we were just talking about the different types of layers and getting people more uh, used to thinking about it. Uh, speed. We did a speedrun layer, and that one was like... So the layers in that one, there's a lot of possibilities, and a lot of it is kind of non-linear, because you can do things in different orders. You can kind of choose when you dip down and pop back up. You can go forward and backwards. Um, and the level loops on itself with a door. So that's a very interesting, concentrated, uh, sort of non-linear setup. Right. But the, one of the main layers I focused on was doing everything with star power and then doing everything with, uh, Koopa power, right? It probably could have been a, a way to better ignore the Koopa, right? And or, or not get this first star so you can never touch a star. But there's absolutely no way to get the ending unless you are in star power, right? So you can get all the keys without uh, using a star, but then you got to have a star for that final part. Yeah. My brain is exhausted. Yeah, that's my specialty, though. <laughs> the secrets I put into this one, the, the stuff I put into some of these other ones with the optional challenges. My Yoshi power-up lap is incredibly layered. I will take a quick look at this. And we'll take a look at the, uh, we already took a look at the website for it. So this one... You can jump over these things if you want. You can run under them. You can you can be careful about these guys and kind of ah! take your time. Oh, I'm actually playing it. I'm not doing the. Uh... Okay, gotta be serious. Or you can just jump on top. Nope. Whoa, well, that was close. I need to stop that.
Look at that. That's interesting how many different ways you can sync and desync those guys. And this is a little harder because of the randomness. And I nice. remember this. And I didn't do a low jump. Or if you're just a slightly advanced technique, you can easily get on top like that. And you just go around like that, or you can time it. This guy's a little bit of a jerk, but that's the obstacle course before you get your power up. And here's your power up. Yoshi everything's different you got a whole nother layer which is a completely different uh, possibility like this becomes a platform and you can three four five six seven eight nine ten you can get all ten only when you have Yoshi uh, you can jump up here with Yoshi when these guys stomp you can just do this with Yoshi and like time it and get the stuff out of it And I leave you enough room just to stand there. Oh, uh, look. Oh, how nice. These guys, you can just eat them. You can eat this guy. And you can get up here. You have to crouch jump as Yoshi in that crazy, crazy uh, nuance. But look, like, oh no, I can't get up here, but if I do that, oh no, there's an even higher height you can go for. So then you realize, well, how do I get up there with Yoshi? And the, here's one of the techniques. Nope, that wasn't it. Oh look, he made a nice little cubby for resetting it. <laughs> ah. That jump you're making just looks impossible time to make. <laughs> For that, that technique? When you're squeezing between the fire and the Koopa Troopa, it doesn't look possible. Then again, it's only been recently found that Mario can jump around. Here's another, here's another path that's open to you as Yoshi. You can just jump up here. Oop, did not mean to do that. Yoshi can actually be killed, so be careful. He can be crushed. No. No! Okay. So, you go through as Yoshi, you can run on top of those spikes and jump to the uh, highest area without needing to do the shell trick. Or you can do this. And then you can you go over here and you get the key early because normally it looks like you can only get that with Yoshi but I made this extra double bonus thing that if you get it as Mario you claim the 50 coin you go in and get Yoshi yeah. and a lot of people can make nuanced things but it's about making it uh, in a way that doesn't frustrate the player, that communicates things through level design just like normal games do, or normal levels do. It's not about just beating them over the head with nuance, right? So, so yeah, you can come over here. How do I get up there? Can I jump high enough? Nope. Don't get crushed! Don't get crushed. No, he's gonna get crushed. <laughs> oh, I was kind of close. So I guess I put that there to stop people from run jumping? Why? I didn't want them just to run and jump. I thought uh, I did want them to. You got me. Hmm. I feel like you can do it. Nope. Oh well. That's just part of the layers for that level. So yeah, you can kind of see them working 
uh, thinking about your design in terms of it can do this or that or this or that and like find the sweet spot that still upholds all the principles and still gets the job done but has all these extra things and what I liked about the the, the other level we spent a lot of time on the um, run busters is that you were thinking of all the cool stuff that I wanted you to think of because of design not just because it's in the game and it's nuanced you're like oh I wonder if I can kick the shell and have it hit it. I'm like, that's exactly how that's designed. You're like, I wonder, you even did the thing where you kicked the shell left and you ran to the right and it worked. You did so many other things because design, <laughs> right? And so many other mm -hmm. nuanced levels are just like, look, do you know about it or not? Ha ha ha, we made the requirement require it. I'm like, I hate these. <laughs> so let me wrap up and uh... all right guys, that's about it for this week's recap of the Mario Maker Workshop. We're doing a lot of crazy things. We're going to be talking about layers and development and counterpoint. Uh, you know, every session this week, we're going to be looking at a lot, of, a lot of different examples. We're going to be examining the, uh, what's it called here? The worksheet. And we're going to be adding more elements to the workbench and passing it along. Uh, I was going to, if the stream, if Bleach didn't play, I was going to take my current assignment time loop and show you guys what it looks like recreating the stage and, and fulfilling the assignment because I got to add secrets. You know I love secrets. <laughs> um, but we can save that for another time. And um, yeah, more people in the workshop need to create more uh, projects, right? Get it started. Uh, do the basic layout. Get the whole thing kicked off. Zara is currently working on this one. That's good. Uh, I want to increase the scope plan, but I want a few more people to do it within our current scope. I reconfigured the entire scope planner, by the way, so that there are more options that make more sense and they're they're weighted differently. So now some are like one, two, two, two instead of one, two, three, four. This makes a lot more sense. Uh, Super mushrooms one, fire flower, star power, buzzy shell. Those are all twos instead of buzzy shell being like a seven or a six, which is ridiculous. And everything makes a little bit more sense now. Ooh, I'm going to replace this two with the dry bone shell. Cool. Yeah, so take a look at the new uh, options. You can just buy this, this spreadsheet right here, or you can uh, take a look at some of the options in the drop down and see how many points everything costs. Everything should be increasing points as you go down go down like that and some of the new things are like I broke down counterpoint into these five or uh, these categories uh, I have more clear definitions of development including Kisho Kintetsu I have speed runnable very specific things we can talk about this next stream but there are some levels you only just hold forward and jump over the pits and that's like the maximum time you can get uh, those aren't very interesting for speed running, but if you're going to put that in your level, you got to make sure that it's tuned for that, right? Don't put any weird, unnecessary bumps in the road if it's not necessary. Uh, some is about having multiple paths and picking the fast path. Uh, all right, this this is like some of our blocks only levels had an upper path, a middle, and a lower, but ultimately you just run forward without stopping. Uh, so even though there's multiple paths, it's pretty much still it's the same strategy as number one. Uh, tricky maneuvers with soft penalties. We can go over examples of that, but uh, there's all kinds of different variations of why speed running layered design is challenging to make and interesting to play, and it gets more interesting as you go down. Uh, yeah. So it's important for the workshop to take a take a look at this, try some new levels, ask questions, and we will address it all next week. Um, more le lessons on layers. We may do secrets, or I might even attempt to do counterpoint, the lesson everybody's been waiting for. Got a really cool thing to show you for that, and I might as well not wait. All right, until next time, guys, I'm going to flip back over. My name is Richard Terrell. I go by Kirby Kid. This is the Mario Maker Workshop, and we will see you guys either in the workshop or on next week's stream. But until then, guys, peace. Where is that?